If you're thinking about life on the road, learning the pros and cons of specific rigs before you leap is super helpful. In this video, Wendy shares the pros and cons of living full-time in her host truck camper. I invited Wendy to share because she's tried several styles of rigs and absolutely loves the combination of features and benefits specific to a truck camper. And it's not something most women have, but maybe more should consider. This video is part of the rig comparisons we did during our weekly Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour. Check out the link in the description to join us on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. And just a quick reminder, if you like this video, it really helps others find it if you hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Wendy. I have been a travel adventurer my whole entire life. First, um, just by planes, trains, and automobiles with uh, between work and personal pleasure. But I've been to Europe, many islands, um, and different places. But it was six years ago that brought me to the RV world. I was actually looking at tiny homes and felt uh, like I might move that to that and a friend of mine said why don't you try an rv first and see if you like it and then they're meant to be on wheels and go from there so i first had a winnebago travel trailer that was 22 feet that i pulled with my durango and then i had a sprinter van that was 22 feet that i um traveled in for a short time wasn't my best match but um what i've traveled in primarily the last four years is a host truck camper so I have a 3500 Ram Dually. My truck camper doesn't require that from a weight perspective, but it is the truck that I found. So I have no issue with the weight or what I carry. This particular model has two opposing slides. The um, host is a high-end truck camper. The weight is about 4,000 pounds dry. I have 65 gallons of fresh tank. I have 45 gallons of gray and I have 38 gallons of black. So I have a lot of tank capacity like a fifth wheel in my truck camper. Um, I also have off grid. So I have 860 watts of solar on my roof and I have 480 amp hours of lithium batteries. So I also have a 3000 watt inverter. So I work full time, have been remote for 25 years before my daughter was ever born. And so when I, as a solo single mom and adventure, when she went off to college, that's when I started to pursue what my options were. And she was a junior in college when I set out on the road of kind of doing what I do now. So what drew me to the truck camper was in this particular case, and people refer to it, it's kind of like the Hobbit. When you walk in, it just opens up to a big space that you don't plan or ex expand. So it was like an efficiency apartment on the back of my truck. So I have a full kitchen that has a full oven, three burners, a convection microwave. I have a fireplace. I have a full dry bath with a house size shower in it. I have three sleeping spaces. So I have a six foot jackknife couch, a three foot jackknife couch and a queen bed. So I really like that I didn't have to make up my own bed. I have three different closet spaces. I have four pantry cupboards that I have. And then what we call in the host world, a morgue. So there's a tray that is the length of the floor um, that is the piece that sits in the bed of the truck and it's a pull out tray and that tray is over six feet long. So I have bins in there. So storage is a huge capacity um, available. So for me, the pros of the truck camper are that efficiency apartment, lots of windows, lots of natural light, little quadrant rooms of everything that I have in place. The power grid gives me no issue with power, no matter where I am. In 2019, I traveled through Canada and up to Alaska and back. So I was be able to be very nimble, very quick, very adaptive. And I didn't have one reservation except the Denali National Park in August, which you had to make to be able to get in. Otherwise, I played everything by ear. And that's how I travel. So I may travel every two, three, four days. I might stay someplace a month. It really depends on where I'm at, how I'm enjoying it, 
I do work full time and I'm an executive in a consulting firm. So sometimes I have to travel. So I like to be in and around a place that I have three pups and my rig. So if I'm around friends or in a community that I know that that can be kept safe while I may go out for three, four days for work, that's another component. My unit is small enough that, you know, on the street or um, in a driveway, I'm not taking up a ton of space. And I like to be able to take it off. I am one of the people in the host chat and in other truck camper chats that takes the camper off more than others. So I often take it off. I feel it's very simple. I think it's easier than my Winnebago travel trailer to hitch up and go. If I'm going to be around or available, I just take it off. I carry my tailgate in the back seat of my truck. And then I have my full function of my truck when I'm out and about. I'm not a huge do-it-myselfer. I have done some projects internally, like I put in a lagoon table and I created a, a, a tabletop that I stained and, and did. I took out the accordion door and put in a normal rod that expands so that the shower space even is greater than what it was. So I've done many um, of my own projects to make my place mine, took out the RV balances and put up normal curtains that are blackout in inside but for the most part all three of my units I bought and then just kind of tailored the inside versus build from scratch for me the con of the truck camper um you know I, I don't have a lot of cons I find it very versatile and very flexible um I can go places others can't and I can be very nimble and quick to move so set up tear down is not hard to do you know if somebody said hey you need to be out of here I'm talking 20 minutes or less and in if it's off the camper 30 tops so um I can put it back on in 10 to 12 minutes easy I like my Dodge Ram because I can go in anywhere for maintenance service get it done get it taken care of it's not unique and um, not that I've had a lot of repairs, but that's certainly been beneficial. Um, host, I had a two-year warranty, so I used them. They're out of Bend, Oregon. Now that I'm out of warranty, I have found specific service providers in areas here in Iowa and Phoenix, which are two areas that I travel. So when and if um, it's maintenance type related work, I just go to the same place and take it back there if I need something to be looked at or fixed, if I can't do it myself. And I like friends teaching me. So if I'm someplace and I'm with others, I enjoy learning and getting that knowledge and experience from others. All right. Thank you, Wendy. I, one, one thing that um, I would see as probably the biggest con is how high off the ground the truck camper is, and that can be hard for some people with mobility. That that would be, and I'm 13 feet tall when it sits on the truck, so I'm not as tall as a semi, but some bridges, I you know, and especially in the Northeast or in um, smaller towns could be an issue. So I usually follow the truck route. So that would be very true, Joni, of the disadvantage of when it, especially when it's on the truck is its height. I want to thank Wendy for sharing the pros and cons of living in a truck camper. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you're a woman who would like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, where we organize our weekly nomadic women's virtual happy hour every thursday at 5 p.m pacific this is joni with the galavan enjoy your journey